Today we're building a complete end-to-end -end system that combines a CRM integration, a dynamic voice agent, and a rescheduling engine, all into one powerful appointment reminder system. This isn't about any individual component or the template you'll get at the end. This is about creating an all-in-one system that actually delivers value. This is the first tutorial that shows you how to combine all of the N8N voice AI building blocks into one batch calling system. And we're gonna be using appointment reminders as the use case. Because in the real world, a lot of things don't happen real time. And we get clients that ask, hey, can we call all of our tomorrow's appointments today at 9 a.m.? So what we're doing is creating a batch of people that we're going to call. Not only that, but by the end of this video, we're gonna walk away with three different use cases that you can implement batch calling for. And all three of the solutions are low hanging fruits that you can sell to businesses right now because they deliver value. I'm Alejo from Amplify Voice, and this batch calling system is the culmination of everything I've learned. And it's the exact type of comprehensive workflow that delivers real business results. Now let's get into it. The three most practical use cases for batch calling are appointment reminders, lead reactivation, and follow-up campaigns. All three apply to pretty much any industry, and they generate money for businesses in different ways. Appointment reminders avoid no-shows. Lead reactivation attempts to convert old leads that showed interest at one point. And follow-up campaigns help warm leads stay warm and make it more likely that they convert. And one of the key advantages of batch calling systems is that they don't need complicated triggers or deep integrations with CRMs. And although today we are going to set up an integration with a CRM, this could be as simple as a Google Sheet. So for today's use case, we're going to be focusing on appointment reminders for real estate showings. So let's do this step by step. Step number one, when are we going to call the leads? We have found that mornings is when people are most likely to pick up their phones. So we can actually create a trigger that is based on a schedule. So we have this system triggering every day at 9 a.m. Awesome. Step number two is getting the leads from our CRM. In this case, it's going to be Notion. We're going to select get many database pages. OK, so we're getting contacts from our CRM. I can execute the step. And what came back is every person in our CRM now, right now we're filtering, uh, but this is our actual CRM. And what's interesting is that we have a bit of a challenge here. And this is what that looks like. We essentially have company, first name, last name, etc. And these are calls we actually did and appointments we actually set with our previous voice agent from previous parts. So you can go check that out. When I go to appointment details, what I noticed is that the dates for the appointments are actually formatted differently. This has the full date. And this is a different format, which is the year, month, day, time, and time zone. And when we build these workflows, we have to have this in mind, that in the real world, data is not perfect. It's usually very messy. And sometimes we need to process that data a bit. So when we pull these contacts in our um, N8N, if I go to table, I'm going to be able to see the appointment details. Property appointment details. Great. And if I scroll down, I'm going to see Monday, August 25th. I'm going to see uh, this 22nd appointment with the formatted date. And then also, also the 22nd, but formatted in a way that our automation can't really take in. So we're going to transform this data into something that's more useful. So in order to reformat that date into a way, into a format that's usable, what we're going to do is an AI agent. That's going to be a very simple AI agent. Click on define below, and we're essentially going to say, transform the date into uh, year, year, month, month, date, date. And instead of the actual hard coded date, we're going to grab the appointment details. There we go. We're just going to paste it in the right place. Okay, so transform the date into year, year, month, month, date, date. We are going to require specific output format. So we can click on output parser structure output parser. And then what we're going to say is date. And we're giving it an example of the output that we're expecting. We're just going to add a chat model. And if you're curious about AI agents, I did a whole video about it. So you can go check that out. It's part two of this series. And when handling dates, I usually prefer GPT 4.1. Uh, and we're going to lower the sampling temperature, you could, which you can find in options. So there's less randomness. We actually want to minimize the randomness as much as we can. I usually go for 0 0.7 or 0 0.3, 0 0.3 when I want less randomness. So now when we run this, we're going to face one more issue. That is that some of these dates are actually empty. If I go to appointment details, maybe there wasn't an appointment. 
maybe there wasn't an appointment that was set for that contact in our CRM. So we also need to filter for that. So some of the outputs that we got is, hey, I didn't receive any date. And some of the other outputs are the correct ones. We need to avoid these in order to let the data flow correctly. So we're going to add another node and it's essentially going to be an if node. And we're going to find appointment details, this one. And we're going to ask, is this empty or not? Because we don't want it to be empty. So we just need to make sure that string is not empty. And now when we execute this step, there's going to be three elements that go through and two that don't because they are empty. And the ones that end up as false are going to end there. Uh, we're not going to contact them. So when I run this again, now I actually get the dates that I'm interested in. But now we have a slight issue. And this is where advanced N8N nodes really come in useful, which is when you need to manage data and merge data together. What's the issue? That if I go to this if node, I have all these people that went through uh, that have actual appointment times, appointment details. Awesome. But when I pass the data through the AI agent, now the only output that I'm getting is that formatted date. So I need to merge the data that comes from this node and this node. And if you're curious about the merge node, I'm going to show it to you right now. There's other advanced nodes you should definitely learn about, which I teach in the third video in this series that you can go check out. So for this merge node, we're going to choose to combine items together. And it's going to be a combination by position, meaning the first item we want to combine with the first item, this first user we want combined with their new formatted date. Why do we want the date formatted? Because once we merge it, we can actually filter what we want. We, we just want to call the people that have an appointment tomorrow and ask them, hey, are you coming or not? We just want to filter the people that have an appointment tomorrow and ask them, can you make it tomorrow or do we need to reschedule? That way we can minimize no shows. So what I'm going to do is from this true branch, I'm going to go to the merge node as well as from the AI agent. And I'm going to combine the first item here, which might be the, the August 25th with the item that is now properly formatted. So I'm going to get the full data and then at the very end, the output with the correct formatted date. And why we need it formatted this way is so we can actually get to this if step, which checks, hey, is this date tomorrow? And how we would write that out in an eight and syntax is we would use dollar sign now, which is a variable. It's a variable that comes in with an eight n. Then we want to check if this date is tomorrow, right? So plus one day. So today is the 21st. So tomorrow is the 22nd, but we don't want all of this extra stuff. So we can say format as year, month, date. And now we have the right format to check for. And we're checking is this date equal to this other date. So we can finally get all the appointments and only the appointments that are tomorrow. You'll see two items went through. If I scroll to the bottom is because they have that appointment date of tomorrow and one item didn't because that appointment is on the 25th. And now we're finally ready to loop through these contacts and call them one by one. So I'm going to hit on the plus, look for the loop over items split in batches. That's what we call this batch calling. Uh, we're just going to call one at a time, but you can do more than one. It all depends on your concurrency in your voice AI system. And then on this loop branch, we're going to have a API call to retail. So it's a post request to the create phone call. You can find all of these details in their documentation or by downloading the template that I'm going to share with you, which includes all this and all this from the previous parts directly in our school community. So come join us and you can get these templates, ask questions, revamp them for your use case. And now if I open up this JSON with the details of uh, what number are we calling from, what number are we calling to, which agent do we want to use and which dynamic variables we want to use. So if I execute previous nodes, I'm going to be able to get some of this information, for example, which number we want to call. And because we want to make our lives easier, not harder, what we're going to do is set up all the variables that we need right before that HTTP call. In edit fields, we can set up the agent ID, agent number, user number, and all the dynamic variables that we need. So let's get that agent ID. I'm going to create a new voice agent with a single prompt, create, and right here, agent ID. I'm going to copy that and paste it in here. Then we have the agent number, which phone number we want to use. So let's go to our phone numbers, copy that, bam. The user number we have over here, property phone. And then I just drag and dropped first name, last name, email, 
pro property company and we have all that information here. Now, when I execute this, I'm going to see that in the API call, all of these are populated in the right way. So we're going to test this. I'm going to execute step. So now that I set up all the variables that I need, I can go to that HTTP call and I'm going to see what that looks like on the right. You're going to be able to see what you're actually sending on the left. You see all the variables that you're setting. So this looks good. I'm going to go execute step and bam, success. Good. What we're going to do now is also call the next person over and we're going to wait. If you have a few hundred contacts, you know, then you, then you want to uh, consider your limitations on uh, concurrency in retail it's 20 concurrency. You can, you can talk to 20 people at a time per account. In this case, a five second wait is just fine. So we can wait after the first call and then iterate back into the loop over items to call the next person. And now we're ready. I can execute a workflow from schedule trigger. Uh, this is going to be triggering automatically every day at 9 AM. Uh, but we can also trigger it manually. We're going to be processing these uh, dates. And now we're going to make a call, wait for a few seconds, and then make the next call. When all the contacts have been processed, they'll go through the done branch. If you want to continue somewhere from there, that's okay. But all these calls are going out. And we're, what, what's happening afterwards? Well, the user is going to pick up the phone. The agent is essentially going to say, hey, uh, you have an appointment coming up tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, are you still going to make it or do you need to reschedule? So let's look at that rescheduling situation. The agent that we're using is actually one that I used for showing you how to set up uh, scheduling functions with Cal.com. So let's go back to Cal.com and I want to show you a really simple, super quick trick to make rescheduling possible without changing barely anything at all. So we're going to go to our event type and then you're going to go to limits. And if you scroll down, we can find the booker active booking limit. We're going to turn that on. And when we do, this is going to show up. And we're essentially saying, you know, each person can have up to one booking active at a time. And we can offer to reschedule the last active booking to the chosen time slot. So the user might say, hey, I'm sorry, I actually didn't realize, but uh, I have another another thing that I have to go to. Can we reschedule? And the agent, instead of scheduling two appointments, is going to replace the current booking with another booking that the user prefers. Let's put it all together. So the data is flowing through. I just created a retail agent whose role is essentially just to call first name and remind them about their schedule appointment. Um, and we're making sure that we can reschedule, right? If they cannot make it, help them reschedule. We created a little uh, conversation flow, which essentially says, hey, it's tomorrow because we know that that's the use case add uh, a certain appointment time and we're defining to the agent by the way make sure you change uh, uh, appointment time as the time of the appointment we're giving that dynamic variable again for the appointment details and not the full date for example tomorrow at 10 a.m and now for my favorite part and your favorite part too let's run this whole system and see it in action so we're getting the contacts we're filtering out based on who has an appointment we're checking that that appointment is tomorrow and we're launching the calls. So I'm getting a call right now from my agent. I'm going to put it on speakerphone. No Hello. problem. Just to confirm, am I speaking with Alejo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're speaking with Alejo. Great, thanks Alejo. This is Saya from Amplify Boy. I'm calling to remind you about your appointment tomorrow with Alejo at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Will you still be able to make it? Uh, actually, yeah, I, that's going to be tough. I don't think so. No problem at all, Alejo. Would you like to reschedule your appointment for another day or time that works better for you? Yeah, yeah. Can we go for uh, Monday afternoon, evening? Let me check what times are available Monday afternoon for you. It looks like Monday is actually before your original appointment, so it's already passed. Would you like to look at next Monday afternoon? That's instead? funny. It doesn't have the most recent. Oh, okay, well, I teach you how to set this up so that doesn't happen to you in the calendar appointment video, so I'll leave that above and the agent functions video. I'll also leave that linked. Um, let's check for next week, Monday. Thanks, Alejo. I'll check what's available next Monday afternoon for you. One moment. Next Monday afternoon is booked up, but I do have 6 p.m. or 7.30 p.m. available that evening. Would either of the times okay. for you? Yeah, let's go for 6. Booking your appointment for next Monday at 6 p.m. 
You're all set for next Monday at 6 p.m. Alejo. Awesome. So appointment is set. Let's go to our bookings and scroll down. And Monday, 6 p.m. is the only appointment that I have. So cool. So we saw it in action. Uh, it'll call every person in our CRM that has an appointment tomorrow. You can create flexibility into this. And if you want to know how to, you know, uh, make this scenario work for your use case, for your client, uh, uh, remember that there are six other parts to this series where you can learn everything that you need to know to create workflows and create systems around voice AI that are actually useful, that are actually delivering value to businesses. And if you want to dig even deeper, come join our school community where we have four live, live events every week and where I can help you design and troubleshoot anything that you're working on and sell better voice agents. Maybe you just want this build for you. Well, we can do that too. Just click the work with me link below and me and my team will take care of you. In my opinion, batch calling is one of the most powerful use cases because it's a very low hanging fruit. It's a very entry level for you as a builder or for a client. But remember to do it compliantly, get consent from people that you're going to call. So use cases like appointment reminders, database reactivation, follow up campaigns. At some point, you've gotten an opportunity to get consent from the other person to receive calls. And very importantly, they have a clear value proposition. Your voice agent can answer the questions that they have while they're in the sales process. So it's a win, win, win. You're creating a system that you can sell to a client to deliver value to them so they can deliver value to their clients. And watch how some, something as simple as this can skyrocket a business's conversion rate. Thank you for following along in the N8N Mastery Series. You'll find all the workflows, templates, and support in the school community. But more than that, you can get my direct help by posting in the community, sending me a DM, and coming to our live build hours. And I can show you how to create a real business out of automations and voice AI. But above all, the number one rule is that you remember to never stop prompting. See you in the next one.